with amazing pictures. The executive producer, Dr. Mike Gunton, joins us live from New York with more. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very well, thank you. Well, we know the Earth has changed a lot in uh, the last decade, of course, but what prompted this, uh, this revisitation of our planet, if you will? Um, I think we felt there were about th three things, really. First of all, you know, I think following on from Planet Earth 1 was a, felt a, quite a tall order. It's such an extraordinary series. You know, the shadow is cast very long. <laughs> right. We felt there were, there were, we, we could do it because there were three things, really. New stories. There were definitely a whole load of new stories that the scientific world was discovering. Secondly, the new technology. We felt there had been a jump in technology which would allow us to tell stories we couldn't have told in Planet Earth right, 1. Right, true. Um, uh, th th that getting much, much closer to the animals, getting in their world in a way that we couldn't do in Planet Earth One, changing the perspective, if you like. And I think the third thing was we felt that there was a kind of groundswell building about people were, were thinking about the planet, the fragility of the planet, and those three things together felt, yes, it's time to do it, and we can do it justice if we get it right. Now, one of the things you're focusing on this series is taking the viewer into cities and also seeing how the animals are able to thrive in urban environments. Yes, I mean, as well as taking a different perspective in the, in the wilderness parts of the world, and, you know, this series is mostly about Mother Nature, about the, the challenges Mother Nature throws at, at, at animals. You can't really make a series in the, this time in the 21st century without acknowledging the fact there's another habitat that's that's growing all the time, which is the urban world, the habitat in, that is dominated and inhabited by us. And that is a, it's like an ecosystem in its own right. And animals do share that with us. And some animals do incredibly well. Uh, uh, if, if, they're, if they've got the right adaptations, like peregrines here in New York, or leopards in Mumbai, or langurs in, in, in Jaipur in, um, in, in India, you know, they, they, if they've got the right skills, they, they find it a, a very, very comfortable place, a successful place to live. We're watching this video right now, this iguana uh, oh. trying to get rid of it, oh <laughs> trying gosh. to escape these snakes. Oh, I don't think this is going to end well for the iguana. Oh, oh and it didn't. Oh, <laughs> oh, it did not. <laughs> Does not pass the cherry. But don't test. worry, because keep... <laughs> oh, he got oh, out, he got keep, out, Keep Yay! watching, because... <laughs> he slipped right through. <laughs> We were all cheering for him. We were kind of cheering for the we iguana. We were rooting for the iguana. iguana. The yeah. Circle of life is crazy. Right, it's not really circle of life, but yeah. Yeah, but we've got some other incredible video that you guys captured. Uh, the flamingos. Talk about the dancing flamingos video here that we're going to see. Well, I mean, just quickly about the, about the iguanas. That's exactly the reaction. What I heard you, that's everybody's reaction. Yeah. But, of course, as well as that drama <laughs> and that extraordinary intensity of connection, we also gone to wild places that, you know, real four corners of the planet. You know, there, there's this extraordinary high-altitude lakes in South America, which freeze at night. And these poor little flamingos are frozen oh in, gosh. literally frozen in by their legs at night. And then the sun comes up, it boils to an incredible temperature. And then they all get together and do this extraordinary balletic choreographed mating dance. Where wow. they all flick their heads backwards and forwards. And one by one, they pair off and then... Hopefully all is happy before it gets cold again in the night and then they freeze <laughs> up again. Exactly. <laughs> Amazing. Well, it's a six-part series. If you want to check it out, it uh, debuts on BBC America this Saturday. Uh, how can you not watch? I mean, I'm already fascinated. But, you know, I'm the kind of person, I read the back of the book first. So I'm glad to know that the iguana got out. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That, that, those are I tense feel, moments. <laughs> I feel better about watching now. Uh, Dr. Uh, Mike Gutton, thanks for joining us. And we will be watching for Planet Earth 2 on BBC America. Thanks for being on Good Day this morning. Oh, such stunning yes. images. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> when I'm listening to him, I'm like, oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, we're also, uh, we're watching.